Hello and welcome to the video. This is a little bit of a different one. Again, I'm in 3DXR, so thank you to Ben for hosting me. Always nice to come up here and uh, there are lots of new toys. So I've actually come up here because there's going to be a video on auto launch. I'll put a link down in the description for that if you want to have a look at all that stuff for auto launch with Ardu Pilot. Ben has a lot of experience with some of these big vehicles here doing that stuff and uh, it's great to come and actually have an expert walk me through it. Now, all of the stuff in front of me on the desk is stuff that I have found rooting around in stores. And as you can see, it is an Aladdin's cave. Uh, loads of cool stuff up here. It always costs me money when I come up here because I end up buying some stuff. But here on the desk, there are a couple of things that are very new that I kind of wanted to show you. So Ben, thank you very much for the opportunity. Uh, what I'll do is I'll hand over to Ben and we'll kind of zoom in on this bit of the desk and Ben can take you through some of these bits. Uh, there are some fantastic new connectors. Uh, most of you will be familiar with things like XT60, uh, XT30, XT90. We're pretty used to those in the hobby now. They've pretty much become the standard. Um, but there are some really cool things in here that have additional pins and will make uh, simple connections a lot easier to do. Um, there's also some updates on the Pixhawk Cube. Literally, the day I am here is the day it's arriving. So it has just arrived on in, in a little box. So Ben's unpacked it. So I was gonna talk about that and do the update. Uh, that's quite a big deal in terms of aerial safety. And at the end, Ben's gonna talk about the T-motors. There's loads of new props and loads of new motors. Some of them, uh, you can take someone's eye out with. They're quite big and chunky, both for fixed wing and for multi-rotor. So Ben, over to you, walk me through it. Okay, so this is all a, a mass range of connectors. So you might be familiar with your standard XT90s. This is the anti-spark version. And what has been out for a little while now is these MT60s. So these give you three pins and a only one way fit. The smaller MT30s and what's new today is we have the MR range so we have the MR60s which are a flat three pin connector also uh, will only connect in one direction and these are really handy for connecting up your ESC wires so in this case we can put one on the motor end and one on the speed speed controller and as well as the MR60 we have its smaller brother the MR30, which is the same sort of one-way fitting three pin connector design. And all these have these nice back plates. So once you've soldered it, there's no need for heat shrink. It just has this beautiful cover. Um, another addition we have is the XT90i. So this is the same physical size as your XT90 connectors, but we have the addition of two pins here on both ends and they can be used for your signal wire so if you are doing your normal connections to your ESC, where you have your red and black wire, and then also for your signal, um, you can send it all down one plug. So this is a really convenient way to, to wire up power and signal to your speed controller. So in this case here, we could use one plug to connect signal and ground, and then our power and ground. And again, they have the same um, protection on the back so no heat shrink. We also have a bigger brother so this is a AS120 and this also features um, four inner pins in this case so this is geared up towards um, smart batteries with a CAN connection and the same on the uh, female end here and also with uh, plastic shroud so yeah the, the 120 generally means up to a 120 amp current so looking at this you know i i I'm th i can already see a number of ways that i could use this i mean i i was aware of things like the the mt connectors because i've come across those in things like the tbs products um for connecting the motors and things out in the it might have been actually the, the mt30s but I love some of these extra ones, and also because they, they're locked to specific polarities, 
So if you wanted to have a motor so it was easy to swap out and change, because uh, at the moment I'm on a big kick of making things removable, wings and stuff, yeah. um, you know, it looks like there's lots of pretty heavy duty connectors here that I could even use Absolutely. just for signal if I didn't, uh, if I wasn't yeah. bothered about the, so you know, things like servo connectors, if I didn't want to use a standard little servo connector, because you know, those aren't really designed to have lots and lots of connections, disconnections. Yeah. Um, this really small um, one here, for example, yeah. uh, could be a super version for that. So I think I might end up having a couple of those from you before I disappear today. And one more connector is the AS150 connector which is a very heavy duty anti-spark connector which also has the four pins for a serial connection and this one is sealed as well so it's a waterproof connection that will only fit in one way and meant for um, the new generation of smart batteries such as the uh, Tattoo Plus 1.0s yeah, these are quite beefy. These are the size of a couple of house bricks. Yep, exactly. Yeah, you could use them to build a house um, or to power some um, very large drones. So this particular one here is a 12S battery, a 16 amp battery. And in the past, to, to get a 12S configuration, you'd be grouping together two or four batteries. These put that into an easy to manage one battery solution with a handle. It has the LED indicators on it to indicate the percentage of charge and also status indicator if there's anything wrong with the battery. They do self-balance and there is an auto discharge function to store the batteries. So it just, just makes whole battery management on large UAVs much easier. Fab, thank you for that. So there's an awful lot of new stuff um, about the Pixhawk family of flight controllers. Yeah, so there's a lot of um, exciting new developments in the um, Pixhawk 2.1 range, but I suppose it's best to address these as the cube now, <laughs> yep. as the Pixhawk name and numbering system um, is very confusing and uh, doesn't really make much sense. Um, so yeah, we've had the Black Cube out now for a couple of years, a uh, very mature product. It's uh, used in many um, people's drones as well as commercial products. And what we're starting to see now is uh, two variations to that. So we have an orange and a yellow. The orange cube is basically the replacement now for the black cube um, for new users. It features the H7 uh, processor inside as well as increased memory and RAM. So that's going to be the, the stable, um, the, the standard cube product going forward. The black cube is still going to be available for a long, long time to support the people that have it in their systems. Um, the whole purpose of the cube system is to be modular. So for example, here is a purple cube or a mini cube, and it shares exactly the same footprint as all the other cubes. So any of these cubes can go onto the standard carrier board, as well as this mini carrier board and carrier boards that end users design themselves. So there's this, this new one that's just arrived today, can you just talk a little bit about that? Because that's got something that's very new. Yeah, so the, um, the new Cube Orange standard set features a ADSB in uh, receiver. So that's a UAV Onyx product, which is fitted into the underside of the carrier board. Um, and that comes as standard, so that allows you to see other aircraft that are um, transmitting on the ADSB system. So this has already been a feature available in the ground control software, such as Mission Planner, the ability to display these other aircraft and also avoidance of other aircraft. So that is coming as standard. So what you're getting with the new um, orange suite, for a small increase in price, you are getting the faster H7 um, orange cube, as well as the ADSB in, which used to be a standalone product costing about £200 in the UK. So the price of the standard, the orange cube standard set with ADS-B is going to be about £250 over the previous cube black standard suite of £238. So a £12 increase sees the addition of a £200 product and the faster processor. 
So just very quickly, ADSB, for those of you that don't know, that's the system that um, aircraft use to identify each other so they can spot each other and know where they are. Um, ADSB transmission is a very expensive proposition. You have to go through lots of certification and stuff to be able to do it. But the ADSB antenna that you can see on this little orange cube unit here is a receiver. So inside Mission Planner, you'll actually be able to see all of the, you know, the, the large, um, heavy commercial traffic around you. And that's all in the aid of improved safety. Um, the last one then that uh, I've, I've looked at while I've been here is you have lots and lots of all of the new T-Motor stuff, uh, which is beautiful. And I just wondered if you'd just show a couple of the motors and props on the camera, just show some of the latest stuff that you've got, because again, uh, it is all really nice stuff. And I do like the way that T-Motor matches the props and motors together to make it really easy to get a really solid system. Okay, so yeah, lots of exciting new products from T-Motor. Uh, let's first have a look at their fixed wing motor range. So the AT series motors. Uh, this particular one here is a 2820, common size, uh, 880 kV in this case. Um, they're just superb looking motor as well as the construction. Multiple bearings, beautiful windings, um, just such a, a superior motor to use. You use a lot of those, don't you? I've seen them on lots of planes yeah. in here. Um, this, this particular one's been quite nice and I'm about to use its bigger brother here. So this is a 4130, 450 kV. So this is going to go on a 6S application, probably about a 15 inch prop. Um, and again, just a, a nice solid motor, really well made. There's also um, some new propellers in the multi-rotor range. So we have this MF series. This is a folding carbon composite propeller. Uh, this particular one is a 15 inch and they are really light and um, stiff good alternative to solid traditional carbon props so this is their normal polished series prop um, also cheaper as well you're coming in about a third of the price um, for this composite equivalent very nice looking prop good performance good efficiency and to go with that folding version is the solid ones these are available from 11 to 17 inches. Um, again, just a, a one-piece composite prop. The folding ones I showed you there previously, these are available from uh, 13 inch up to 34 inch um, in size. Uh, another product from T-Motor, we're starting to get these in, is the uh, what we call the arm sets. So these are a motor on a mount which already has the ESC fitted. It has an LED. Um, so yeah, you, you buy these in pairs to suit your configuration if it's a quad, hex or octo. There's also coaxial ones where we have the upper and lower motor. Um, and they just make the production of a uh, drone so much quicker for me. If I have a frame with, in this case, 30 millimeter arms, this is just a part I can fit and wire up. Um, look beautiful. IP rated, a very fine solution. Um, this particular one here is a U8, so this is meant for 28 inch props, and it's a 190 kV, so this will be run off 6S in this case. And that's something I'll draw people's attention to. I get lots of questions on the channel about what prop and motor should I use for this particular kind of model. Um, if you have a look on the website at things like these kind of T-motor uh, motors, they're very good. They tell you what prop you should use with them, and they also give you an idea of how much thrust and they generate and what uh, what energy they take to produce that thrust. So you get an idea of flight times. So if you if you're interested in longer flight times and bigger models, then uh, the T-motor stuff isn't inexpensive but you get what you pay for with motors and props and the T-Motor stuff makes it really simple to pick the right stuff for your model. Absolutely, yeah, there's central resources there on uh, the T-Motor website and also on my website uh, for yeah, what efficiency to expect. So that's, that's the, the first thing I try and look at, what, what is my current draw going to be at the uh, hover level. Um, one more product here from T-Motor is a, another new range of props. These are the VTOL series. Um, so this particular one here is a V22, and the idea is that this is a, a sort of better pitch combination for the prop for use on um, VTOL drones, so the, the lift motors, because um, your sort of characteristics for a VTOL are different to multi-rotor use. So they produce this range of uh, one-piece carbon, uh, full carbon fiber propellers for that purpose. 
Fantastic. So there's been a couple of new ESCs as well that I've seen um, hanging around. Are, are those new too? Yeah, so as well as the um, fixed wing series of motors, they've just came out with a fixed wing series of ESCs. Um, so here's a smaller 40 amp ESC here, which features a uh, 5 volt back. Um, again, cost wise is good, and from T motor, you know, the quality is, is always very high. And this particular one here is a bigger brother, so 115 amps. Um, with this one has a few options on how the back set up if it's 5, 6 or 12 volts um, and this this is probably what I will use with the 4130 motor in this case these also go up to uh, 14S so this is a 6 to 14S speed controller for the, for the bigger motors Brilliant, Ben thank you very much for that uh, lots of very cool stuff I'm really excited to see that T-Motor is starting to do more for fixed wing and I like the idea of these hybrid props for things like VTOL which have characteristics of both a fixed wing prop and a multi-rotor prop as well so they can do both jobs uh, but for me uh, probably the most exciting thing is the probably least expensive that you've just gone through which is the connectors so I'll put links down below for all of those pieces um, if you're interested in having a look and thanks again to Ben for hosting me for the day do keep an eye out for that auto launch video and check out the big boys toys playlist where all these kind of technologies get covered in more depth Thanks for watching the video and watching right to the very end. You can find me in all the usual places on social media. And if you like the video and like what I'm doing here, then hit the subscribe button and hit the bell notification icon too. If you really like what I'm doing, you can go the extra mile and become one of my Patreons for access to me directly for support and also giveaways and regular updates too. If you're looking for particular content, then check out the playlist. I organize all of my videos into playlists. So if you're looking for a particular topic, you can find everything here. If it's called Introduction To, it's designed to start very simply and build on that simple introduction to teach you all about it. If it's called For Beginners, then that is really aimed at people who are brand new to that part of the hobby. You can also search on YouTube for anything that you're interested in using the search function at the top. So iNav Painless 360 will find all of my videos and even the playlists around iNav. So thanks again for watching and happy flying.